Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the groundbreaking uh, for the Connect Historic Boston project. Four years ago, when the National Park Service won a federal transit authority, Transit in the Parks grant, it allowed the city to prepare a planning study to generate ideas about making travel to national park sites by walking, public transportation, and bike riding fun and easy. In October of 2013, the city won a $15.5 million Tiger Grant from the United States Department of Transportation to build four separate such projects. We are here today to celebrate the next chapter in the Connect Historic Boston project. Joining me here today are Martin J. Walsh, Mayor of Boston, Peter M. Rogoff, Under Secretary of Policy for the United States Department of Transportation, Michael Creasy, Superintendent for the National Park Service, Pamela Stevenson, the Massachusetts Division Administrator for the Federal Highway Administration, Mary Beth Mello, Regional Director of the Federal Transit Authority, and Ken Miller from the Federal Highway Administration. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Martin J. Walsh, Mayor of Boston. Thank you. I want to thank Commissioner Dennehy uh, for his great work here. I also want to thank uh, Commissioner Fiandaka from Transportation as well uh, for the great work. This is an exciting day. I know a lot of people are very excited. I, I too want to thank the Undersecretary uh, and the Superintendent of the National Park Service for be both being here today, and I truly appreciate your support here in the city. I also want to uh, recognize a few other elected officials that are with us today. We have uh, City Councilor Josh Zagum is with us today. <laughs> City Councilor Charles Yancey is with us today. <laughs> State Representative Danny Ryan is with us today. <laughs> and even though they couldn't make it, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren and Congressman Mike Capuano uh, they have representatives from their office here with us today, so I want to thank them as well, because they were a big part of this. So thank you very much to Senator Warren and Congressman Capuano. This kind of transformative project can only happen through transformative partnerships. There are too many people and agencies to name, and there's a lot, whether it's the federal government, I want to thank all the federal officials that are with us today. I want to thank all the state officials with us today, and I want to thank all the city officials with us today. Uh, because they really have been, it's been a great partnership here. But we do have to acknowledge the United States Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration for the ge this generous $15.5 million grant. I also want to thank you for that. I also want to thank the National Park Service for their vision and for their stewardship every day in our precious historic sites here in Boston. We also, and as I thanked earlier, I thank Mass Dot, uh, who's here, but DCR also for their cooperation in every single stage along the way here uh, in, in, for this project. We're here at the Blackstone Block. We can we can see right here why visitors come to Boston and why they love our city. They can they can see and feel his, the history of our nation right on these streets. These are the oldest streets in America that we're standing on right now, but they're still teaching us what makes every city street work. So whether it's Faneuil Hall or Beacon Hill or Charlestown, we have to protect the historic, historic character and have to make sure everyone can enjoy it. These, place, these places are where American ideals of equality were born and fought for, right on this, on this very ground. These are the fundamental to our identity as a city. These are not just our past, but they're also our present and our future. That's why Connect Historic Boston is so exciting. We are preserving our revolutionary legacy by using revolutionary innovation in our city today. We're going to rebuild some of the most historic roadways as complete streets. That means more than getting from point A to point B. It means getting streets that have great public access. We've also got a family-friendly family bike trail underway that will connect the Greenway to the North End Waterfront all the way from North Station to Beacon Hill. 
It's going to create a whole new way to experience Boston for visitors, residents, and communities alike. It'll be one of the greatest urban cycle tracks in the United States of America. Connect. I was, waiting. I was waiting for Pete Stebbin to give me a clap on that one. <laughs> Connect Historic Boston is going to take down, take our downtown tourism sector to another level. That's what it, that's what means in hundreds of small businesses getting more customers and hiring more workers. And some of the some of that I should have mentioned that earlier. Some of the businesses are here as well. And I want to thank you for what you do for our city, uh, not just by providing a great service for tourism and visitors that walk through your establishments but also by creating hundreds and thousands of jobs in our city. So I want to thank you for that, because you are the backbone of our city. It also, we're also working on residents, making sure residents take an even more pride in sharing our city with their family and friends. That's good for our city spirit as well as our city bottom line. This project also proves that immense value of the start of infrastructure improvements. And that's what we're looking at as we talk about how we connect our city. It's going to show us the powerful new tools and models for street design. And that will help us envision what's possible across our city as we embark on our citywide planning pro process. The Imagine Boston 2030, and one of the leaders of that process is the Chief of Economic De Development for the City of Boston, John Barrows, who's with us today, so I want to thank John. So as Boston nears the end of its fourth century, we recommend our historic roots to find inspiration and innovation for a thriving future. And I, I do want to thank you all for being here today, and I want to thank everyone who, who was involved in this project. Projects like this seem like they should just happen, and sometimes it takes a lot of work to do it, and sometimes a little more than a lot of work. And uh, But here we are today, so thank you very much. I'm going to turn it back to uh, Commissioner Denny. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Mr. Peter M. Rogoff, who serves as the Undersecretary of Policy for the Department of Transportation for President Barack Obama. Well, thank you. I'm here to really congratulate the people of Boston and, and congratulate Mayor Walsh for an extraordinary vision to transform this historic neighborhood into something that will provide an even higher quality of life and even greater business activity for this tourist hub. Uh, the Obama administration was thrilled to provide some 15 million of the $25 million that's being invested in these projects. And we were thrilled because we view it as just returning to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts the taxes that the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have sent our way in Washington, D.C. These are the, precisely the kind of investments that we like to make, not just because they improve the quality of life, because they provide a safer environment for pedestrians and for bicyclists, and we have seen an uptick in accidents and injuries to pedestrians and bicyclists, but it also just improves the quality of life and makes a beautiful neighborhood even more beautiful. Uh, Mayor Walsh has shown extraordinary leadership in answering the call that Secretary Fox put out, a mayor's challenge to really improve upon the record of bicycle uh, and pedestrian accidents and deaths. Uh, we look forward to partnering with him, not just in this neighborhood, but in neighborhoods all across Boston to make that better. Now I'm gonna provide my own little history lesson here. All of us know about Paul Revere's famous ride in 1775, where he told Sam Adams and John Hancock that the British were coming. And we all know that he rode a horse when he did it. It's time for us to finally come clean on why he was riding a horse. He was riding a horse because there wasn't an adequate bike trail to use. <laughs> Today, 240 years later, we are fixing that problem. Oh, that's nonsense. Bicycle wasn't invaded until 1860. Let me just give you one data point. It's a number, $12 billion. $12 billion is the estimated annual tourism income for the city of Boston. As Mayor Walsh will tell you, it's the best kind of income to have. The tourists come in, they fill the hotel rooms, they eat at the restaurants, they sprinkle money all over the place, and then they leave happy. 
projects like these are truly investments in making sure that that $12 billion figure continues to grow. And that's why we're making them not just here in Boston, but all across the country. You know, Boston rose to the top among a huge number of applications to win this $15 million. It really was the result through our Tiger program of what could only be described as a brutal competition for money. It is literally easier to get into Harvard than it is to win a Tiger grant. That's how tough the competition is. Apples and and I will tell you <laughs> that this project rose to the top because of the extraordinary partnership of the people standing up here uh, on this stage. The city departments, and there were many of them, the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Transit Administration, the National Park Service. And they put this money to work in record time. We actually had a shorter window to get put this money to wor work because of a deadline imposed on us by Congress. And the folks standing up here on this table, sh uh, on this dais, showed that they could put the money to work and valuably quickly. It should be a lesson on what we can do on so many other projects when it comes to permitting, when it comes to improvements around the city and, and communities all across the country. We are trying to convince Congress right now to finally give us some sustained federal funding for highways and transit and improvements like this one. What we need in Congress is to demonstrate the partnership that these people up here in Boston have demonstrated in this community. If Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate and the administration could come together, we could finally have six years of funding that could really make a difference, that could improve the bridges all across Massachusetts, can get us new capacity on our roadways and our transit systems, can rehabilitate the T, but that's not going to happen unless we have a breakthrough with Congress soon. I will say the Massachusetts delegation gets it. Mr. Capuano is on the Transportation Committee. Senator Warren is on the Banking Committee that looks after transit. There's a lot of leadership in this state when it comes to transportation, but we need them to convince all of their colleagues to break through the deadlock and get us a six-year well-funded transportation bill. So congratulations to everybody here. Congratulations to the people who made all this work. We're looking forward to breaking some ground and we look forward to making even greater investments in Boston in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Undersecretary. Uh, our final speaker of the day is Michael Creasy, who's the superintendent of the National Park Service in Boston. Please welcome Mr. Creasy. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Uh, it's, it's always great to be at uh, a ceremony that uh, takes us to this point. Well, let me just say, um, Peter, when you uh, were talking about how competitive the Tiger Grants are, a few years back I was not in Boston. I am um, four weeks on the job, so I'm still learning my way around those Paul Revere bike paths. But um, I was in Lowell as the superintendent of the National Park there. And I remember the day of getting the call uh, from City Hall saying that Lowell didn't get the Tiger Grant for the streetcar system that we wanted that Boston got it. And those scoundrels down there took it, took yet another one away from a city in the Commonwealth. But I have to tell you right now, Mr. Undersecretary, you made a great choice. <laughs> you know, it is always exciting when, uh, when you get to the point where there was once just a concept and now you've got a shovel ready to put into the ground. But I think what's so impressive about the getting to this point is in the back of the program, as I was reading through it and getting to understand a little bit more about Connect Historic Boston, was the 23-some organizations that really got us to this point. And I just want to recognize that this doesn't happen just by chance. As Peter said, this is, this is harder to get into than Harvard. And that took a lot of brain power, that took a lot of collaboration, it took a lot of trust by the various organizations and agencies that came together. But from the beginning, this was truly a genius of a project. The public engagement process led to the Connect Historic Boston plan that was supported with the funds that were needed that got us to where we are today. And as I think the Undersecretary mentioned, in these fiscally challenging times, projects just don't happen without good support from the community and their local governments, without state and federal official support, and certainly the advocates and the businesses in our community. I want to be clear that this is much more than just sidewalks and bike paths and signs. Connect Historic Boston suggests taking back our streets, 
our trains, and our waterways. The design challenges with building bike and pedestrian pathways in a historic city are great. But it is that historic character that makes our city a place that attracts visitors from all over the world, the residents and businesses that are looking for a sense of place to live and work. Boston is an extraordinary city, and this project will only enhance the spirit that sings out from our heritage. The National Park Service is proud to be a collective partner in this. We have three national parks here and many programs. I did just want to call out Steve Golden, who was one of the original envisioners of this project and has worked so closely with the city and Federal Highways and other here. But many of the parks and the programs are very excited to joining once again as we continue Connect Historic Boston's vision. Thank you so much. be remiss if I didn't take this time to acknowledge the tireless efforts of the dedicated City of Boston employees whose efforts have mel make, helped make today possible. Uh, Commissioner P. Daka, uh, my city engineer, Power Jay Zing, Katie Cho, my construction, uh, Vinny Kupka, planning for the Boston Transportation Department, uh, Andy Smith Raymond, who worked on the project for GCD many, many others, but last but certainly not least, uh, Chief Civil Engineer Bill Egan, who has tirelessly, I saw him out here at 7.30 this morning speaking to the <laughs> And I think everybody in, in the audience also deserves a round of applause for themselves. There were more than, more than 40 public outreach uh, meetings for this project, and, and I think today shows the success of those meetings. So give yourself a round of applause. concludes the speaking portion of our program. We'll now let the official groundbreaking ceremony.